and shabam! What's up, everybody? Good morning. It is time for Marriage Monday on a Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Try it again. I want to see a different harmony. Marriage Monday on a Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right. What's up, guys? It Hi, is everybody. Nick and Brooklyn. If you're like, I thought it was Nick and Nikki. We've been explaining this for a few weeks. Here we are. Look, it's working. Sounds good. Looks good. <laughs> Sounds good. Hey guys. I got how... the shiny dome out today. I love. It's not I glaring. Love I thought it was going to be glaring. No, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I'm really proud of our set. Yeah. It's so funny because people have no idea what's going on in here. So we are. <laughs> Don't. If they saw, they would be like. <laughs> we're all, we, watched, we watched The Minimalist. And. Uh, yeah, if you haven't watched that, it is on what? Netflix? I think it was Netflix. Netflix and. You need to watch it. We it's, just hate clutter. It's really good. And we have so much stuff. <laughs> and um, you just, you know, you acquire stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we've been going through everything yeah. and we're ripping everything out. Everything's in piles through our house. Yeah. And, and the question we are asking is two things. I don't know what they are. Does it bring us joy like no, that I don't, moment? I don't, and I don't ask joy. I ask that one. And... Is it essential? Val yeah. Does it, is it bringing value? Is it yeah? Is it bringing value to our lives? Is it essential to our lives? So if it's something that we have had for like two years, and we're like, oh, maybe one day we're gonna need this. Obviously, we haven't needed it that bad if we haven't used it in right. two years. And if it ever comes up that we do need it, then at that point, just go get. We'll it. go figure that out. Yeah. Like but, we're not gonna sell anything that's. Or get well, actually, so we, we believe in two, a principle. Obviously, we believe if we have it, we can sell it because we need to make sure we always have uh, savings and stuff in the account. But we also believe that you shouldn't sell what you can sow. So, we love to give things away. And uh, yeah. so, it's a great opportunity to find things to bless people with, but just so much crap. And yeah. so, my I've ripped everything out of my bins and consolidated <laughs> hard drives. I'm going through stuff, I'm getting rid of old dead drives that haven't yeah. been working. And, um, books that I probably won't read again or I've formatted the digital I'm sent, taking over to Salvation Army and uh dude I don't even know but it's, it's a, a train wreck but it's okay we're just cleaning it out looks great and, on camera um, yeah <laughs> you know I think this summer too I'm gonna paint the ceiling maybe like a different color or something yeah that's fine. cool but hey we have a really cool topic for you today yeah we do and um do you have all your yep let me read those first and then you can you can talk. Talk, yeah. um, but first, what's really important are you guys that are watching. Oh, you beautiful people. So I just wanted to say hello, hello. to Jen, to Julianne, to Stacy Gray. Why are you saying it like that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Emily and I are sitting here in the treehouse watching. Oh, that's what's okay. up. What's up? Molly. Woo. Yeah, it's great to have you guys on. Do us a favor. Share it. Everyone share it. Share this video. And congratulations, all you first four people. We've been talking about doing a giveaway for the last few weeks. Uh, all four of you just got a shirt. So, Julianne. Okay. Jen. Jen. Stacy. Stacy and Molly. Molly. and You get a t-shirt. What did she say? Who else was with her? Who was with Stacy? And Emily. Five right. shirts. So, that's it. You guys get shirts. <laughs> all you other people watching this, you relate to the party. So, if you want a shirt, go to PastorNick.net. Uh, they're 10 bucks or 12 bucks or something like that. 20 bucks. I don't know what they are. Anyway, just buy one. It, it makes us money. Helps us out. Be, and they're really cute. They are cute. Yeah. They're cute. Okay, so uh, today we have a really great topic for you. Yeah, so today so. is uh, clues that you are in a godly relationship. So we actually right. had someone message us. And do you want to read the... Yeah, let me read the message. And, um, let me pull yeah. it. and like we said, guys, if you ever have questions, just email us right there. M-M-O-A-T at ghow.net should pop up on the screen right right there. Bam. And uh, if you message us, it will stay anonymous, but it will help people. And this is a big, this is a massive, um, this is a really good question because mm -hmm. a lot of people through get into relationships that they shouldn't be in, stay in relationships they shouldn't be in, miss out on relationships they should be in, and get married to people they weren't. Those are getting married to. Yes. So um, the question, go ahead and read that. Yeah. Question so again. the question we received was, how do you know if a relationship or even a friendship 
with the opposite sex is part of God's plan for you or if it is temptation from the devil, mm -hmm. from anonymous. So I also, we are going to talk about um, like relationships, like, you know, but we're also, I think a lot of the points we're going to tell you today will um, fall into friendships as well. Yeah, um, will. Not just with the opposite sex, but even with, you know, like a friend, somebody yeah. that you confide in. So really, this is a great video for anybody watching, whether you're married, whether you're single, whether you're dating, um, whatever it is. So it's mm -hmm. going to be really good stuff for you. So a lot of, a lot of times uh, I have to explain to people, especially younger people, um, and I'll tell you why younger people. And when I say younger, I'm talking like 25 below, 30 below. It seems like people, when they get past their 30s, they stop asking for advice. And I really love this about our church. Our church yeah. has cultivated this generational model of continual growth. And it's really neat because you do see a lot of people of all ages asking really good questions in our, in our church community. Um, and I think you should. No, no matter what age you're watching, I just feel like what happens is people who get divorced, people who get widowed, people who um, have, you know, have kids or they're living together and they're in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever, they just quit asking. They're like, yo, I'm old enough to make my decisions. But yeah. biblical truth transcends all age. Right. Uh, it, it transcends all gender. Biblical truth tran transcends all generations and all mm -hmm. ethnicities. It is a world Which truth. Which is why, you know, truth. like a younger pastor can lead a church of people that even 80 year olds in their church. Mm -hmm. And that's because the truth is the truth. Truth is truth. Um, no matter how you cut it, no matter where it comes from, yep. it's the truth. And I do love that about our church that, you know, we really do build a generational model. We really have um, our churches adopted. Like we don't do life alone. Right. So I think it even comes down to like the decisions that you make in relationships, having somebody to be able to be like, Hey, is this a good decision? Should I be in this relationship or not? Is it helpful? Is it harmful? So a universal truth, Nikki and I <laughs> adamantly stand by um, is that relationships of opposite sex. And I'm not, I'm not talking friendships. Like we have tons of friends of the opposite sex. Okay. But relationships that become a texting, calling, hanging out daily, yeah. eventually someone's going to like someone. It yeah, doesn't like mean it's of the devil. Going to coffee, going yeah. to grocery shopping together, yeah, like, going to do this together. Like once you start kind of min start ming mingling your lives together, yep. whether you may feel that attraction or not, somebody in that, we've just seen it too much over the years. It's an age old Somebody. Truth. God made you that way. Yeah. Somebody's going to be attracted to somebody. And it's, it really is just kind of how it, I just, I've never seen it where, you know, there's, there's <laughs> it hasn't a term been that way. <laughs> called arcing in a, in a, in the electrical world and arcing, uh, happens when, um, when two, uh, conductive elements are close enough to each other that the energy will jump, it'll arc and all of a sudden you see this power go between the two. And that's what happens when you're conductive, you have desires mm -hmm. and so what happens though is a lot of times i call it the default relationship this happens a lot the accidental relationship the ac i say it all the time huh i'm like you're in an accidental relationship you're we didn't know we were in a relationship until we had to break up that was my high school relationship <laughs> i was in a high school sweetheart relationship for like a year and a half we never called each other boyfriend girlfriend whatever until we had to break up we were like i guess we're kind of breaking yes, up we like gotta break up yeah and that happens and and it's because you go wait like Okay, here's a proof that you might be in an accidental. Hey, Bob Cheney. Sorry. What's up, he just Bob? Like, Good morning, here's here's a <laughs> here's just a clue. You might be in an accidental relationship when somebody of the opposite sex contacts or hangs out or starts dating the person that you were uh, just friends with. Your heart hurts, or, ah. you, or you become jealous, or yeah. you become mad. Um, like these things happen. Yes. So here's a clue that maybe you need to communicate your your desires to somebody, or you need to back off. Mm -hmm. And go, hmm, that might that might not be yeah. a healthy thing. Yeah. So So let's look at these points here. Um, so clues that you are in a godly relationship. So I read a bunch of articles. I, I read through the Bible on some of like the most uh, prominent relationships in the Bible. Looked at a bunch of different stuff. And Nikki and I kind of came up with this list. We hope it helps you. I saw some lists that were the stupidest crap I ever seen in my life. I'm like, that is so dumb. Please yeah, be careful what you uh, just because it got a what Bible you get on, on Google. Yeah, just because it has a Bible verse on it doesn't mean blogs it's that always people, good thousands stuff, of people okay? are reading. And I'm like, please shut up, yeah, stop gotta, toxifying people's minds. 
Yeah, qualify the information that's going yeah, into your brain, really. okay? <laughs> yes, just because you can type it doesn't mean it's real. Because, yeah. <laughs> like, anybody could do that. They do yeah. all the time. <laughs> they do all the We live in a world that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, do you guys like uh, Pastor Nick's new glasses? Aren't they cute? <laughs> we can see his beautiful eyes even more now. Oh, yeah, good. I see your beautiful face. I was going to say butt. <laughs> But then I was like, I shouldn't say that on camera. But now I realize. But now I just you already say it. We do All right, nice moving on. Got a nice moving butt. on, moving on. I like number butt. one. Here's number one. The relationship doesn't draw you further from your walk with God. Have you read? Mm -hmm. Doesn't draw you further. Right. Oh, because it's a godly relationship. Because a lot of people who go, it's a godly relationship okay. if it draws you closer to God. No, it's not. Not necessarily. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean God put it there. That doesn't mean that it's right. It doesn't right. mean that it's someone you're supposed to be with, hang out with. Uh, but a good clue mm. that it is um, is potentially a good one is it doesn't draw you. I think you should be more concerned in, in, in qualifying a relationship by saying it's not drawing me further from God than it does draw. Your drawing yeah. closer to God is really up to you. Yeah. Nikki doesn't draw me closer to God. Mm -hmm. That's not her job. And a lot of times I think people go, oh, I'm waiting for that person that will complete me. Mm -hmm. That's, that doesn't make sense. Like Jesus either completes you or not. Um, Nikki compliments me. Mm -hmm. She doesn't complete me. And so, Nick compliments me. Yeah. Like, you're cute. Oh, <laughs> compliments our life. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I think a good clue is that it's not drawing you further from God. And, and that, that matters. Like, I've been in relationships where I go, hmm, I hang out with you, I date you, maybe it's a guy friend, we chill out, we, we're always kicking it, and I go, but when I get done hanging out with you, I feel further from God. That's mm -hmm. not good. That's a clue. It's not a good relationship. Um, Michelle here says, which is so sweet, God continue to bless you guys. Clearly, the two of you have God's blessing. Good pastor, you have been there for my family when we were alone, feeling like God must have turned away. Thank you. God, you made time during our losses. Yeah. I'm really so sweet. sorry for those losses, and I'm really glad to see you, and I've been praying yes. for you over these years. And um, hey, Whitney. It's good to hear from you. Thank you for commenting. Yeah. Whitney, girl, oh, Whit. we that's love one of you. My, that's like a daughter to me, man. I love Whit. That's my girl. I miss you, Whit. One of my daughters. Got tons of, tons and of spiritual. Jacqueline, what's up? With little heart. <laughs> what's up? I love Whit. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, good clue. Think about it. Is this... Is my friendship with this person, do I feel further from God? I probably need to stop hanging out with you so much. Yeah. Probably shouldn't be texting you. Probably shouldn't be calling you. Yeah. Probably shouldn't be dating you. Whatever. If yeah, I, and, if it's and drawing it's pretty, me further. it can be pretty evident, too. Like, yeah. if you're, maybe uh, you were going to church, and now all of a sudden you've started to withdraw a little bit. Or maybe at your church you were serving or you were involved in your small group, life groups. We call them life groups at our church. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, when you have this relationship, it's been drawing you away from, you know, just those those things that we do to strengthen our walk with God. Or maybe you're not reading your Bible mm -hmm. like you used to, or you're not praying like you used to. You're not worshiping the same way. So they're just they're little clues that you could really see that, you know, could tie not necessarily, but it really could t tie to the relationship that you have in your life that's not right. Yeah. And another there. reason why I, I chose to word it this way is because I see a lot of people who date and then they're like, hey, we do Bible studies together. We pray together. I'm like, don't do that. Don't be, don't be intertwining your spiritual life together because here's what you don't want to happen. You don't want to be in a relationship with someone that the only reason they're reading their Bible and the only reason that they're pressing in is to marry you, to hook up with you, because you want to see how they're going to lean into God by themselves. One of my yeah. one of my one of my pastors told me this when I was engaged to his daughter. <laughs> so like this is a true statement, as true as it can be. We were getting ready to buy a house. I was, and he said, "You buy the house. You're not married to my daughter yet." I said, "Yeah, but we're engaged." He goes, "You're not married until you're married. You are single until you're married." And so don't start intertwining all these things. Mm -hmm. You be single until you marry that person. Yeah. All the way up until you say, I do, you are still single. I don't care how, how much money you got into the wedding, the engagement ring, yeah. the honeymoon, whatever. You are single until you're married. And that's so important because Jesus wants your heart uh, singularly mm -hmm. before it's a, a maritally. Yeah. So 
that's I'm passionate about that. And it's yeah. been an age old truth that I have seen proven over and over again in uh, through people we've mentored and counseled right. in youth ministry, college ministry, now obviously as pastors. Yeah. Um, back off. <laughs> Slow it down, little buckaroo. Bring it back in, Bring Terry. It, back it up, Terry. <laughs> I said that Sunday. You did? I, I didn't did. catch it. Oh, man, you missed it. Maybe I did. I probably laughed. Uh, that was our dog. Oh. <laughs> All right, second one. Okay, so um, number two, the relationship stretches you in healthy ways. So, again, these are godly things. These are these are good things mm-hmm. about a relationship. Yeah, I was in a relationship one time um, that the – uh, I always dated taller women for, I don't know why I just always ended up in relationships <laughs> with taller women. Um, and, uh, that if you hear any weird sounds, it's our dogs. Our dogs have coughs. They yeah. like cough a lot and they yeah. have issues. Crazy. Uh, <laughs> and so I was, I had such a broken identity from the way I grew up and rejection that I was like, I'm going to break my shins and stretch my shins. That's not a godly stretching. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. That's not a good, least, that's not a good stretching. No. Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, you should never have to feel like this need to physically change yourself. Well, that's another for point. a person. That's another yeah. point. So we'll get to that. But it but... stretches you in godly ways. Yeah. So like being around Nikki has stretched me. Now this is where this isn't. Oh, uh, you're you're drawing me closer to God. No, you're stretching me. You're making me think outside my box. Mm-hmm. You and I started dating, and uh, I had gone through financial turmoil, mm-hmm. and I said I'm going to help you. We weren't even dating yet. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to help you um, have a great credit score. Yeah. Just listen to everything I tell you to do because yeah. I knew what to do. I just got to know bad situation. Yeah. I lost my job. And I trusted your advice. Yeah. And because of that, your yeah. credit score went through the roof. Yes. And by the time you were 20 years old, yeah. you had a perfect credit score. Yes. So. And it was good. Yeah. So that's one of those stretching things. Yeah. Um Maybe you're hanging out with someone and you've been out of shape and they're like, hey, let's go to the gym. And they start pushing you to be healthier. That's stretching you in a healthy way. Um, If someone's testing your patience, tolerant. I had a friendship who I love the person, but every time I was around them, they stretched me. Mm -hmm. But they stretched me in a stressing way, in Mm an uncomfortable way, in a dis-eased way. Yeah, like no peace. No peace, right. That's not good. I, I don't want relationships in my life that don't that take my peace yeah. from me. I don't want that. But some people I don't go think anybody oh. really wants that. And and, and it's but gonna, why do we allow it? Because people go, oh, but it's just stretching me. And it's like, well no, no, it's testing you. you There's a big that. difference. It's destroying you. Yes. It's disintegrating you. It's not stretching you. It's stressing you. So is it stretching or stressing? Now, don't get it twisted. Going to the gym stresses me, but it's a good stretch. It's good. Um dealing with people who are difficult like, I'm a pastor. I can't just be like, God, bring all the non-difficult people. Yeah. Uh, so difficulty doesn't mean stressing. It mm-hmm. might be difficult, but stressing is I continue to immerse myself in relationships that, that, that don't, that they, they're pulling on me, but they're not taking me in a good direction. Yeah. So not a, you know, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. You guys, does that make sense? We want to make sure that makes sense. <laughs> um, first, of, I just want to say, thanks, Rain. What she Rain said say? she liked my makeup. So Thank you. <laughs> And uh, I, this is some good stuff. I wish I knew this stuff six to eight years ago. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jen says, I never understood why you said we shouldn't pray together, intertwine that while dating, and I'm glad you touched base on that to shed light. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the people, I know some stuff I say sounds so like unspiritual, but it is 100% spiritual. That's why I'm saying the Bible says the two shall become one. When you get married, I thought, oh, we had sex. Yeah. We're one now, forever. Yeah. Now that's a part of becoming oh, one. That's why if you're having sex before marriage, you're becoming one with that person. You yes. do tie solically with that person. Mm-hmm. However, by praying together, Bible studying together, doing just the same way like two people become one in a life group, you have become one with friends in your church, people in your life. Mm-hmm. You, the becoming one is a supernatural thing that God does. However, it's also a lifetime thing that happens. And so when you're dating, all these things that start Mm. to become one happen because you're doing all these spiritual things (laughs) together. So guard your spiritual life independently. It will become evident individually. You can be looking at someone and go, man, they, you can tell what they do in their private time with the Lord. And so then you're going, wow, I really like that person. I see them in a life group. I see their fruit. I see their qualities. I see that they pray. I see that they worship. 
I see that they're a giver. I, I, you know, maybe you even talk to them. Hey, man, are you a tither? Do you trust God? You know, are you pure? All these things, but you're going, we're not having to do them together to see that it happens. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, we're going to move on to number three. And it says, you feel free to be yourself rather than pressure to be someone else. This is so big. I don't know. You know what I love about us is that, like, I am so comfortable. I've always been so comfortable to be exactly who I am around Nick. The mm-hmm. moment I met him, I was just like, we, we were good. I didn't feel like I had to change how I looked. I didn't feel like I had to change, you know, my goofy personality. And same thing with him. I, man, I dated a lot. Of, <laughs> I dated a lot of people that would be like, you are embarrassing me. I'm a loud, energetic, lively person. And that's not, you know, that's cool for me, but it's not okay with everybody else. Right. But that's okay. He doesn't have to be okay for every other woman. He just yep. has to be good for me, right? Just gotta be good <laughs> for you. So I like it. And people yeah. say, I'm so sorry. I feel so bad for you. Like when you start acting crazy and they're just being funny. Yeah. But I always am like, no, I actually love it. Like <laughs> I have fun with it. I, I love I it. We were on our honeymoon. We were on a carnival <laughs> cruise. And um, Mr. Ron Giordano, thank you very much, actually blessed us with a cruise for our honeymoon. Um, it was super cool. And the, the staff were walking around with like free hug signs and all these like we love you signs and stuff. And Nikki and I took their signs and started running around the ship and like hugging people and loving all people <laughs> together. And then we were at this pre COVID days. Yeah, yeah. And then there was this, um, <laughs> there was live music playing and people were dancing. And there was this like 80 something. No, we did, a, we did karaoke. And then they started doing Yeah. Dancing and then they were Because she loved, she came up and she loved us singing that song. We yep. sang uh, the song from Greece Summer Lovin'. Summer Lovin'. Yeah. Summer loving, yeah. Me and this little lady comes up afterwards. She's like in her eighties or nineties. She's so cute. And did she ask me first? And or I think she might have even asked me if she, if she could dance with you. Yeah, she I don't could know. have a dance with you. She she asked. I'm pretty sure that's how it happened. She asked me if she could dance with him, and I was like, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So she came over and starts dancing with me, and tells me this story about how her husband passed away the year before. They had gone on cruises every year since they got married, and it was Nikki and I's first cruise. So we danced this whole. So I'm like trying not to cry. This woman's telling me the story. It was really sweet. But Nikki's just sitting there, like watching and smiling, and you know, it's just like that's the type of person. You, that's a clue that you're with the right person. Is yeah. that you can have fun together, you can be you together, and you know what? Maybe the you is that you want to stay and play video games and be in all day, and yeah, and, or you like video games now. You have to be careful, though, that the you that you are doesn't need to yeah. change a little bit. Um, no, and that's that's another truth. Like, there are things, you know, that we each had. I've had to grow a lot. That we've had to grow in I because, grow. I mean, how long have we been together? 11, 12 11 years? years? We've been together for 11 and a half years. Yeah, so, like, Holy crap. you got to think, like, we've we've been completely different people, but we've grown together in things, and we've both been willing like if something does really bother us about each other, we talk about it and we figure out like, is this something that I that we need to change? Right. Like, is this something that's like a non-negotiable? Or... But it's typically not qualities or character; it's vices. Yeah, it's a big difference. Yeah, so you have to, and then also with that point, um, these are clues. Feeling that you're... good about yourself, but yeah. do you feel good about that person? Like, do you feel like I need to change them? Right. Or oh, I need to. If, if he would just do that, then he would, you know, right. be what I want. Or yeah. and, and or he has the potential to do this. So you have to be careful when you start thinking that way because there's no guarantee that's ever going to be what it is. And then now you've got yourself a project. Yeah. You're not even really, a, it's not even a relationship. It's like, oh, I'm working on this and this is a project for me. Yeah. That I can had, be dangerous. I had some non-negotiables when I I, I had really ran from God for a season um, when I was in my 20s, 20, 2021 time, six mm-hmm. months, about six months to a year. And I just, I, the Lord just drew me back to godliness. And I went to my girlfriend and I was like, hey, like, I don't want to have sex anymore. I think I talked about this last week a little bit. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to do these things anymore. And she's like, well, then I, like, no, I, we need to do that. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to. And uh, I said, I'm not going to anymore. And she goes, well, then I don't want to date you. Like, those are things in your life that you go, these are non-negotiables. 
um, when I was in high school, I remember dating a girl and we were at a basketball game and I like yelled out loud something and, um, and they were like, oh, you're embarrassing me and stuff. And it was like, well, like, I don't, I don't want to, I can't, I cannot be with somebody who's easily embarrassed. Like, because <laughs> at any given moment, like I may see an opportunity to take the atmosphere and, and turn it for something good. Um, and so those are like, those are really important things. Nikki's very bubbly, very fun. She hugs on everybody, loves on everybody, guys and girls, very sweet. And I'm not like, hey, I don't like you talking to everybody. And I don't like that you hug that guy over there. Like, yeah. I'm like, dude, whatever. Like, I'm cool. Like, I like you. I like your personality. I can trust you. And so those are, those are important. If I have to change you, I probably shouldn't be with you. Um, oh, say that again. If I have to change you, I probably shouldn't be with you. And that's, that's like, I Write hate that it. Write that in the notes. Yeah. It's, Write that in the comments. I just heard it for years. People are like, but I'm going to help them change. It's like, well. Stop trying to change people. <laughs> yeah. Like, let them change. You know, there's things that. I mean, even in your friendships, like, stop. Yeah. Stop trying to change people. You're supposed to be the sign, like, pointing people. The truth. To Jesus. Yeah. You're not supposed to be Jesus. <laughs> You know what yeah. I mean? And I, so often we feel this need to like mold people the way we want or them to be them. or fix them They're or a project. work on I'm them. Working on them. We're not that. supposed to. Oh, it just it's supposed to love people. It fires me up a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, know? let the Holy Spirit. If just they have, love if people. If they have a, a quiet time with the yeah. Now, here's what I tell people. Hey, man, if you really want to see somebody's change, tell them to get into a life group. Yeah. Because like any, help, you like, can help them in one-on-one a life One-on-one change, you know, is <clears throat> one-on-one mentorship, counsel. Like that's, that's different. First of all, you shouldn't be mentoring or counseling someone of the opposite sex in an intimate in a in an intimate encounter. Yes. So like I can there's a lot of uh women in our church that I have been able to challenge, mentor, whatever, from a group environment, from a high level environment. But I'm not sitting in my house with somebody of the opposite sex trying to mentor them. In fact, I remember Mary, I told you about Mary Potter, um, my friend Corey's wife. Mary was one of the I I mentored her in a lot of mm-hmm. ways when I lived in Arizona. I would meet her at Barnes and Noble in Tucson and she would sit at one table and I would sit at the other and I would talk to her across two tables because I didn't want, first of all, I didn't want to get intimate with her. I didn't want to, I didn't want to fuse my heart. I loved her. I cared about her. I valued her. Corey was my best friend. Mary became one of my best friends, loved her to death. But I was like, man, I don't even want the appearance that you and I are together. Not to mention, I told her, I think you're going to marry Corey one day. And so I didn't want to, I didn't want to get in the way for Corey. She did. Yeah. I didn't want to get in the way for Corey. That's another reason with opposite sex is you want to really be careful about how close you get to someone because you might be stealing somebody from somebody much better qualified for them. Yeah. And you might. So if if me and Nikki weren't together and we're always together, she's never going to get together with the guy she should be getting together with Mm -hmm. and vice versa. There was a woman for me and that happened to me. Um, however, I'm glad it happened because it kind of held me up long enough to find you. There you go. Yeah. Um, let's read some of these quickly. Okay. Um, Bobby Vega. Hello, girl. Hey. Love you. I'm just saying, we're meeting in person. Um, you guys can move here. Your house, yeah, come your house will sell fast. Come here. <laughs> Kim says, I feel that God gives you the perfect match. I know that me and my love complement each other. You do. He has different strengths and weaknesses than me, but we balance each other out. And you have to motivate each other in different areas of life. This is what you do in marriage. Yep. That is so good. I agree with that. You know, me and me and you are, we have a lot of similarities, but we have a ton of things that are just different in our personalities. Yep. And when they, when we work them together, they really do. They just like, they're good. Like I kind of, I help you in areas that, you know, you're not as strong in and you help me right. in areas that. But those things came in. to light more and more in marriage. In marriage. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's important. And that's what marriage is. It's actually yeah. part of, uh, part of these points. But like, once, once again, this is relationships. This is intimate relationships, this is dating, this is engagement, this is marriage, but it's also friendships. Friendships too. Yep. Mm-hmm. What's the next one, babe? Um, number four, pre-existing trustworthy relationships can sense a quality of approval on your relationship. That's so much wordage. Sometimes we don't want to hear this. Pre-existing. pre-existing. Why am I saying pre-existing? Because what, what I've seen happen a lot is two people start dating and they know their relationship's a train wreck. Yeah. So they don't come to people that know them. <laughs> Godly people that know them to, so that they can, so they can say, hey, here's what we really think based on how we know you two. Yeah. They go to new people 
that love God. Get in those agreement are, yeah. with their relationship. Yeah. Because everybody wants to see everybody fall in love and get yeah. married. Yeah. But like what I think is a great idea if you are interested is you got to look at those relationships that have been stable and healthy in your life before this person came into the picture. Mm-hmm. And you've got to be willing to listen to what they're saying and not just be like, okay, I hear you and thanks for the warning. But it has to be like, well, let me hear, you know, does you, do you think this is healthy for me? And if they say no, you need to find out why. And then you have to really evaluate that. And honestly, take those things and ask God, be like, God, is this really healthy for me? Is this unhealthy? Is this good? Like, what do you think? If you're avoiding going to people who know you about your relationship, then it's probably a clue you shouldn't be in that relationship. And that's yeah. friends. That's like, if you're teenagers, this is yeah. a prime example for parents that are watching. You've had teenagers and you know they were hanging out with a friend. You're like, I really don't like you hanging out with that person. So they start doing it behind your back. Because they know they're doing the wrong thing. We know. You have, if you are a Christian and watching this, you have the Holy Spirit in your heart. He's going to convict you and tell you, hey, probably shouldn't be kicking it with that person. Probably shouldn't be dating that person. Definitely don't marry that person. Yeah. And you can, you know, you don't, don't lie to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So pre-existing, trustworthy relationships can sense a quality of approval on your relationships. My pastor in Arizona, Pastor Scotty Grulet, he told me, I know I'm your pastor the first time I have to tell you no. First time I go, people go, Pastor, Pastor, I trust your advice. I trust the Spirit of the Lord. And you, hey, I, I, hey, Mom, Dad, I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. Well, I'll know how much you trust me the first time I have to tell you no. Mm-hmm. Should I hang out with this person? No. Should I take that job? No, nah, I don't think so. Yeah. Should I do this? No, I don't know. Should I move there? Mm, not sure. Yeah. That's why I love Pastor Brandon. He came up to me one time. I was putting Christmas <laughs> lights outside. He goes, I'm moving to California. I was like, cool, man. <laughs> I said, and I just, he was like, that's it? I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. So then he was just hanging out with me and I was like, so what you going to be doing? You know, start asking him questions. He's like, I'm going to help a church plant out and I'm going to help run sound and do videos. It's like, oh, that's cool. I said, isn't that what you're doing right now at the church you were at? Because he wasn't at our church. Mm-hmm. So I had nothing to gain from it. Right. I said, like, I know what you're doing right now. He goes, well, yeah. I said, so what's going to happen at the church you're helping now? He's like, oh, I don't know yet. I'm like, okay. I'm like, who you got out there? You know, oh, I got a friend out there. Is he really a good friend? Well, not really. <laughs> so anyway, about an hour later, he goes, May, I heard God. I said, did you hear God? Yeah. Because sometimes it's very, you got to be very careful that you don't hear what you want. Mm. That's not always God. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, but when I was in high school, every one of my friends, I heard God tell me that's going to be my wife. Ain't none of them married to the people that supposedly God told them, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, the truth is, is that we all have blind spots. Um, you know, the Bible says they met their gods are their stomachs. What that's saying is you oftentimes make you, you, you make your desires. You call your desires, God, mm. your appetite. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I, you know, I just remember the first time I, I actually almost got in a car wreck because of a blind spot when I was driving, I was like, 16, 17 years old, me and some of my girlfriends drove all the way down to the beach. We used to live, I used to live in Alabama, four hours from the ocean. So we drove down there for a little trip. We were all coming back. Music's loud. Everybody's laughing. Nobody's paying attention. I'm driving. And all of a sudden I look in my mirror and I don't see anybody there. So I just start going over. Next thing I know, I hear the loudest oh. horn. Everybody starts screaming and like, ah! I'm like, guys, why didn't somebody show me that I had a blind spot? I can't see right there. Mm-hmm. Um, but the people I was with didn't look for my blind spots either. So it's so important. You have to realize that in your life, in your relationships, you're going to have blind spots. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. But you that's why it's important to be around good people and healthy people, people that you can trust, that you've been with, and that can look and be like, hey, there's a car coming on this side. You better not get over right now. You need to slow down. So yeah, it's, it's sad. important. I just talked to someone Sunday, and they said, man, I've, I've known of God. And six years ago, I, I really quit hanging out with a lot of people that were helping me do some of the wrong things in my life. Mm-hmm. But I never really changed my heart. Mm-hmm. He said about this year, uh, the la- over the last year, something happened. Or they go, wow, I really want to serve God. They said, but it's crazy because now that I'm actually living for the Lord, mm-hmm. all those relationships are calling me out, telling me I'm dumb, I'm stupid. Ooh. And they're like, they're just ripping me apart. 
Mm -hmm. I said, you know, it's crazy that people don't mind going to hell together, but the moment you change your direction, they make you feel like hell. Yes. I don't understand that. I don't want to live like hell. I don't want to feel like hell. And I don't want anybody to go to hell. Right. But I can't make a difference until I change the way I live and think. And yeah. so anyway, that's, that's important. You know what I was going to say is... Um, do the rest of them next week. Let's do part two next week. Because we, guys, we have a few more I points. Got, I got five more. We have five more points yeah. that are going to be really helpful for you with identifying godly relationships. I'll give you one more. Because Let's we give already, them one we already more. Hit it. You compliment each other. You should have friendships like David Mater, yes. my best friend, Corey Potter, one of my best friends. Yes. Like these were people, uh, Travis Green. Well, Travis and I are a lot of the same. <laughs> we were a lot the same. I'm thinking like David and Corey were like chill, reserved. Mm. Um, Travis and I would just go insane together. Yeah. But but even then, like he told me to pick up my guitar and start mm. leading on guitar again. But and your ministries complement. Our ministries, yeah, yeah. our ministries complement each yeah, other a lot. And yeah, David, like. Um, it's so crazy because you guys are so different. But we compliment each other. But you just compliment one another. Yeah. And it's just, it's easy. Yeah. You're, it's easy. You were like gracious <laughs> and you were like laughy and you were easy to get over things. I harbored stuff. Mm -hmm. I would go internal. I'd get depressed. I'd get dark. I would struggle internally. And you would just be like, let's pull that out. Yay. <laughs> you know, I we'd get in a fight. I would and, forget why I was mad. <laughs> yeah. And like when I, from all my previous just the struggles I had growing up, uh, when I was in trouble, I lived in trouble. When I was, uh, when there was an argument, a fight, a failure, I lived there. Mm -hmm. Nikki's like, okay, you know, and you know, that's, your uncle was like that too. Mm -hmm. He would, if he got mad at me or corrected me or something as a, as a boss and as mm -hmm. my pastor, he'd be like, okay, let's go eat. You know, it was like correction and then <laughs> let's get over it. Yeah. And, and I'm sitting there beating myself up at the lunch table and he's yeah. like, what's wrong? And I'm like, I feel like crap. I can't believe I did that. Oh my God. I can't believe I screwed that up. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't get that done. And well, he's like, dude, we dealt with that in the office. Keep moving. And that's like one thing you've been <laughs> really good at. You complimented that David complimented. I was insane. He was chill. And together we made a difference. Yeah. Corey, the same thing. Corey and I went places. We fed people. We took care of people. We did mm -hmm. ministry together. Travis was the same way. I, I would preach. He'd leave worship. We, we fused. So there was these compliments uh, of of, yeah. of character and nature in friendships and in dating, yeah. you need that. Yeah, there should just be an easy flow happening. You yeah. Know? Well, and do you see in the Bible, just... God set them out two by two. So yeah. You have to compliment yeah. each other. And if it's not, if it's not working, if it go back to that point we said a minute ago, you should never have to change. You should never be like, I need to change this person. I need to make this work. This has. I gotta fix this so it will work. Yeah. Now, when you're married. You do everything you can to fight for your marriage. Right. You 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 can win because you've got God involved now. You're married. Like you do everything you can to win. Mm -hmm. But when you are qualifying, you're, that means you're dating, you're engaged, or you know, friendships. You have to really I, <laughs> you have to fight for it. Yeah, like you have Well, to, and and here's biblically the Bible says we sharpen each other. We don't change each other. Yeah. You know, marriage there's things that will transform you because marriage is a furnace mm. and furnace molds and changes. But friendships, the Bible says a brother sharpens a brother like iron sharpens an iron. Uh, iron, iron sharpens iron. So we do sharpen each other. Yes. It's important. Um, hey, so the first four people, no, five people, uh, if you will message us, um, message us, where's, where's that thing at? I'm sorry. Message us there and let us know you, I can't, yeah, let us know your shirt size. If you guys want a um, Marriage Monday on a Tuesday shirt, uh, I, like I said, selling them helps us. It makes us a little money, helps us get ahead. Um, we would like to find other ways to create revenue that also blesses you. So you could, if you want, you can uh, cash at me. I'm trying to figure out what my cash app name is. Um, uh, Nick Shy, <clears throat> money sign, N-I-C-K. -C yeah, you so get yourself a... Marriage Monday on a Tuesday. Money sign Nick Shy. Yep. Um, and if you did miss the beginning of this video, yeah, go back and watch. What was it again? Nick Shy said. Our last, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know our last name. Um, go back and watch, and I think what'll be really cool is next week. Come back here. We're gonna meet you back here next Tuesday, and we're gonna give you some more qualifying points. Um, for just a godly relationship in your life. So come back next time.
And then you guys that were first watching, you're going to get a t-shirt. And also, guys, um, if you ever have a topic or an idea for us, something you would like for us to talk about, do, it doesn't matter. On this Marriage Money on a Tuesday, all you have to do is email us at mmoat at ghow dot net. And we'll talk about it. We are not, we have no shame in our game. Right, yep, babe? That's right. Yeah, if you want a shirt, um, I think we'll do them for 10 bucks. If you want them to, us to send them, they're 15. So if you want to pick them up on a Sunday, uh, you can cash app or you can, you get, I have to fix my website, but I don't know, yeah. it's not working. So, so what it is. Um, we, I hope this really helped you guys uh, today. And, oh, Kim says we love our shirts. Yay. Come on. Um, Bobby, I love these series that focus on marriage. Because our culture does not preach on marriage. What mm -hmm. a huge difference it makes to start and focus on relationships. Yeah, we're trying so hard to be yes. present, guys. Um, you know, we're <laughs> fixing this. We're, we're, we're squeezing this in between staff meetings and everything we're doing. We just want to come to you relevant. Share these, please. Put them on your stories. Yeah. Email them to your friends. Text them to your friends. If there's anybody you know that can grow from this stuff, please get it out. I can't wait. I'm believing God that one day we're going to see a K next to the amount of people watching. There's going to be thousands and if not hundreds of thousands, yes. if not millions of people watching these. We just want these. to help you win. Like, yeah. we just love you guys so much. That's it, man. We, we really do. And we've been there. Like, we've been in some pretty dark places yeah. um, even before we met each other that have taught us that, you know, things that we've gone through that we want to use. Like, we don't go through things in our lives and it, not want to... If we don't use them, what's the point? It's selfish not to yeah, share. Yeah, like share. What God's we want to share it. Yeah. So yeah, we're here for you guys. Like I said, email us. We'll talk about it. Um, we love you guys. Yeah, you want to pray everyone out? Yeah, thank you uh, all. What thank you both. You do? So, so appreciate it, Natasha. I love Natasha. You know what's cool? I always see Natasha goes <laughs> back said, and I'm puts. Glad some... he didn't go. About yeah, come on. See, Brandon, if you would have went to Cali, you'd have missed your Cali chick, mm. little blonde. Blonde hair babe, right? She's the best. She's the best. They're so cute together. I was laughing. Someone saw uh, Nikki and Kelsey stand up at church, and they waved at everyone. And some guy was watching online. He said, how'd those two ugly guys get those hot chicks? And I was like, that's really funny. I wasn't <laughs> even offended. Uh, marry up. Marry up. You're not ugly. Well, I know I'm not ugly. And I'm starting to feel a little sexier. I feel like I'm getting Thank back to my sexy that. days. Can I squeeze it? Mm -hmm. That baby. <laughs> I'm gonna do He's been doing uh, my pull ups again. Pull up. I used to do pull ups every day and chin ups. So now I'm like, I'm gonna try to do 100 pull ups. New one year, day. new you. Chin up. No, <laughs> I'm just no, kidding. I hate that he saying. hates that saying, but I actually kind of like it. I hate it. No, I, I'm does. like, new year, new me. No, I saw pictures of me when I was like in my 20s. <laughs> And then I'm going, it wouldn't be Wait, New Year, New Me, it'd be says New that. Year, Old Me at, when it comes you to my physique. You can't go back to your 20s. I can be young and sexy. We just saw Dr. Dre. <laughs> oh, man. Was yeah. like looking ripped. He's like 50. He's and you see Arnold Schwarzenegger. You see Sylvester Stallone. You think Sly don't watch Rocky and go, <laughs> I need to look like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going to be sexy. I want to be, you know, I think, you know, this is true. I get convicted when I'm out of shape. And here's why. Because as Christians, we preach discipline, but then we get undisciplined mm -hmm. in our eating and our yeah. lifestyle. And I think that, I think out of shape Christians um, actually kind of make a mockery of the word discipleship. Um, and I'm guilty of it. Mm -hmm. I was overweight. I was unhealthy. People are like, you weren't overweight. Just because you can't tell don't mean I'm not. Um, so I think every area of our life should, you know, be an example. And I agree. And that's uh, not convicting should, anybody out no. of shape. I'm just saying um, get in shape. I think any area, get healthy. Any, any area in Physical your life, shape, that's, mental shape, like even your home, yep. you know, it should be in, you, you want it to be in order. You I want people want, to look at your life. I don't and want like, Jesus to walk in my office Wow, you're right a now. Christian. Yeah, I can tell you're a Christian. Look at your life, you that's know, good. so yeah. um, Natasha did ask a question. What I was going to say, Natasha, would you mind emailing us this question um, just so we can have it? And because next week we want to finish going over these points and we don't want to miss this question that, that you're asking. That's good. Yeah. So please put the, uh, the email's on the screen. Natasha, email us that question so we can go over that um, in a future video. Yeah. So. Everyone, let's get healthy. Mental healthy. Yes. Read a book. Hey, so a book I'm doing right now, I'm going to back to our, our staff team's going to go through it. It is the uh, Seven Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. It's the workbook. They did a 52-week devotional. So we're going to be going through that. Another book that I'm reading um, that my friend Nick turned me on to uh, is, uh, dang it, less, less The Road stupid. Less Stupid. The Road Less Stupid. Oh, my goodness. 
phenomenal for any type of leader, business leader, entrepreneur, organizational leader, um, and probably just good for your straight up life. Yes. Phenomenal. So yeah. two great books and then How to Worship a King. Yes. Um, hey, let's pray. Oh, wait. And then last, oh, life groups. Life groups are starting this next week. Sign up at jihow.net. Oh, sign up for a life group. Yeah, G- There's so many good ones. 25 life groups. So proud like, of our there are things, life group director, There are fun Kelsey. things you can do with people. There are studies you can yep. do. There's women's. There's men's. There's going to be youth groups. Like So please go sign up for And a if you want to see if the person you're dating is worth marrying, tell them to go to a life group. Yeah. See if they make it. Watch their if you want to see the people you're kicking it with, uh, if you love Jesus and you're trying to get people you're kicking it with to love Jesus, invite them to a invite life group Invite them to you. your life group. All right, yeah. pray for it out. All right, God, thank you so much for just everything that you're doing in yes. our lives. Um, we just love you so much. All of this is for you. Everything we're doing, God, is for you. Yes. We just pray that our marriages would just represent you well, God, that we would fight for our marriages, yes, that we would win in our marriages. We would win in our relationships, God, that we would qualify people that should and shouldn't be in our lives, God. We love you, and we just pray that this week is awesome, and Mm -hmm. we win souls, and we do great things for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Hey, we love you guys. Fight for it. See you later.